Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ziff Community Live broadcast of Workout Wednesday. Today we got episode six for the Power Pyramids. I'm super excited to bring on in with us Mr. Greg Henderson. Welcome to the broadcast. Greg Henderson completed five Olympics, five Tour de France's, won three world championship medals on the track, and 11 World Cup gold medals, Commonwealth Games champion, Coach Hendy. How are you doing today, Coach Hendy? Doing very well, mate. A little bit jet lagged, but uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Looking forward to it. <laughs> right on. If you're joining in with the broadcast in Zwift with us, you can actually log on in, pair your devices, and then go ahead and select either Greg Henderson, Coach Andy there, or myself in Riders nearby. If you file, follow either of us, and then you can ride with us by pushing ride with, or you can meet us at the start finish banner if that's not quick enough. If you did download the workout and load it to your Zwift documents workouts, you can go ahead and select the workout we will be doing and do it right along with us. This is in uh, lieu of group workout mode. That is coming in, uh, soon. That's the information that we do have and we're pretty excited about. We'll be talking about that a little bit. I got two power pyramids in here, but this is the one right here. 1.30, it's about an hour 30. We will be doing and you can see what the profile is. FTP, that's my guesstimate. FTP right now, I haven't done a test in a while, but make sure that's set correctly for how hard it needs to be for your workout. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit workout. Now we are doing the UCI World's Course. Make sure that's also selected so that if you wanna be around us, you can be around us. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that workout button. You can change the course afterwards if needed to be. There it is, UCI World's Course, which I think Greg is Fairly familiar with, actually, <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So, uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and hit ride with Greg, and we will get this underway. I believe I select ERG mode. I'm just going to double check. Actually, here we go. ERG mode, and let's go. So, Greg, all right. uh, Richmond World's Course, heading out on here. You were just recently... At a world championship, I believe. So, what have you been up to lately? Yeah, exactly that. So, I just literally flew in yesterday from Norway, uh, Bergen. I was uh, was assistant coach, director for the USA cycling team. So, it was kind of uh, it was pretty interesting being on the other side of the field, you know, on the other side of the fence, so to speak. It was. First time of that role, but um, you know, I've done enough worlds, I've done enough major international competitions to know, yeah, where we need to be at what time of the of the race, you know. So it was, I just gave a little bit of my insight, a little bit of my knowledge, and helped out the the younger guys, and that uh, no, was a really really good time. Really enjoyed it. So what is that? Uh, that's a new position that you have now, working with. The, uh, the track then with USA Cycling then? So I'm a mixture, I'm a mixture of the track and the road. It's, um, I'll be heavily involved with the, with the track cycling where we've got a mission of getting those, that, that Teens Pursuit team to about, to try and break that magic four minute barrier. And then obviously being world champion, Madison, scratch race, you know, that's my specialty on the track. I can help the guys and girls you know, with tactics there, training there. So it's a, it's a really nice fit. Awesome, awesome, right on. And sounds like uh, you're pretty excited about that. Sounds like it's a little bit different though, like you were saying, being on the other side of it. Um, was there a little bit of, um, obviously proud of, of the accomplishments, everybody that's out there and like investment in the athletes at the same time, a little different being on the other side. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, you know, that's, it's been a very common question, you know, did you miss it? Did you miss it? And I mean, you know, to be honest, it's the world champs. How can you not miss the world champs, you know? It's like when people ask me, do I miss the Tour de France? It's the Tour de France. How can you not miss the Tour de France being part of it? So, yeah, I missed. There's no question when the men's race came on. 
and I saw the guys that were making the final and you know if I had my top condition which you know there's no excuses not to have top condition at the world championships you know I, I'm pretty sure I can make that final and then you know friend of mine Alexander Kristoff he was like this far from winning it I was just I was hitting the hand I was hitting the handlebars for him you know it was like but I mean if you're going to be beaten by someone it's a it's a true champion like Peter Sagan so I it just would have been beautiful you know you're in Norway and it was a Norwegian champion it would have just been so I mean he would have been a hero for him he would have been a hero for life but you know like I said Peter Sagan's He's, he's been world champion three times in a row now. You don't fluke world champion. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, I really would have liked to have been there in the final. I got really excited with the sprint. Really wanted to be a part of that sprint, but I'm very happy where I am too, you know? I can't yeah, complain. Yeah. I, think I, uh, I think I retired at the right time. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And that was quite the sprint there, the lead out. Christoph went really early. It looked, well, not super early, but he went early to suit himself. You know what I mean? What, what, worked, what worked for him out of that corner? And then, I Absolutely. mean, Sagan being the cagey rider, you know, just nipped it there. And I, I was very exciting to watch for sure. Um, if, you, anybody, if, you saw, ahead, Greg. if you saw if you saw the final, it was perfectly designed for him because Christoph doesn't have that massive kick. So you come out of the last corner it's 300 meters. He often sprints long, 300 meters, but then it, it actually dipped down. And, uh, you know, so that's to gain his speed. So it made him very, very difficult to pass. But, you know, there's one guy that can pass him. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunately Peter Sagan. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And that's quite the feat there to grab three, uh, three, three world championships in a row like that. Pretty amazing. Um, sounded like he was in a little bit of bother. Early on, too, or earlier on, uh, from some of the interviews. But um, so, for anybody that might have questions about world championships, uh, about uh, Coach Hendy's experience on this course, the UCI Richmond course, which we'll talk about a little bit as well, you can go ahead and ask questions or tweet at us over at Z Community Live on Twitter or ask questions directly on Zwift's Facebook. And we'll be able to bring those right on in or comments and we will interact with you directly here live during the workout. Greg will probably do most of the interacting as I'm already starting to breathe too hard. <laughs> power pyramids. Here we go. And speaking of power pyramids, what is this on the docket for us today uh, on the workout mode? So uh, this is a um, this is another exercise designed one of, by one of those uh, clever sports scientists at Team Sky. And we would use this maybe a week out from competition where you're already just about ready to go, you know, so you want to touch on, you want to sort of test every sort of zone, make sure it feels comfortable in every single zone. So it's more about controlling that technique, controlling that pedal stroke, making sure you're using a full hamstring glute. And then, you know, we start off with a, a pretty easy power. And as the power goes up, the time to recovery comes down, but so does the interval time. So it's, and then as you peak up, you come and peak back down. And it's, it's a really nice effort. You get a lot out of it, a lot of technique and a lot of strength out of it. So, it doesn't look like quite as much Larry to deal with today. Not quite as much lactate, Tate. No, you won't. You won't hit a lot of lactic. Okay. But if you, you're pushing, you're pushing 60, 65 RPM, which is, which is in that full muscle engagement area. You know, you, you've got really that time to concentrate on a full pedal stroke, which is, you know, if you're a very efficient pedal, the more efficient you pedal. The more endurance you have, so it's uh, it's definitely something that a lot of cyclists, you know, over the years you notice they end up stomping on the pedals. It sort of looks like they just push with their quads. 
Whereas in actual fact, you know, cycling's a full circle. So, um, you know, as long as you concentrate on that, you'll get, you'll get great gains from this exercise. It looks like we found ourselves in the middle of the EVR yeah. race, 2 p.m. start. Here we go. Is this workout gonna hold me in the pack? It looks like it is. Oh boy. And uh, we can even commentate the race as they go by here. If the, <laughs> <laughs> if the heart rate and the breathing doesn't get out too high here. Oh my goodness. So. Wow. <clears throat> come on boys, come and do some, come and do some strength training with us. So looking at the group here now, um, I'm pretty excited for group workout wor workout mode. It'd be really interesting to see how that makes us all do this uh, workout together um, in a ride with sense. So what, do you have any ideas about how that'll change the platform coming up? Yeah, so it's being released on beta very shortly and it's, uh, you know, the way I look at it is yeah, it's all very well to ride in a bunch like this and yeah, it's great fun and it. it's very sociable. But you also want to ride your bike faster. You know, your end goal is to be a better bike rider. So if they can design a, you know, design a program where you're actually involved in one workout together and keep everyone together somehow, then it's just, I can only see it being fantastic because you know what the old saying is, misery loves company. So you finish your workout, you finish your effort, and you get a great chance to have a chat to your mates during the recovery period. You can complain, holy smokes, that was hard. Or, how you doing mate? Yeah, I'm doing great, that was good, can't wait, right out. Yeah, we've got five minutes to the next one, let's get ready. So it's a, it's a communal thing. And yeah, like I always say, misery loves company. You hate to be the only one suffering. Yeah, I think that the, the current situation is you go out and you do a workout maybe with some, and you chat in the general. But I think once we're grouped in a workout together, doing it all, and everybody knows that every avatar and person with you is doing that same effort. And uh, your ability to see their heart rates and their, what they're doing here and there. I don't know if they're gonna be able to swap though in group workout mode, but anyways, I think that'll really change the encouragement level toward everybody that's in the group. So, all right, so I got a 380 at 10 seconds here. And little, here we go. It's a little, little livener for you. A little livener. I'm livening it up. Here we go. There we go. Nice. <clears throat> So on these four cadence, which sorry guys, I don't have a cadence sensor on right now. We are using a hammer Cyclops today with ERG mode. Pretty excited about it, really enjoying this thing. And, um, but because I've been on a strain gauge for so long, the strain gauge always kept my cadence for me. And so I never had a need for a sensor. So we'll get a sensor on here quick. And, uh, but I got a pretty good idea where I'm at after 15 years of cycling <laughs> and uh, we'll keep that lower cadence going on one 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 thousand two one thousand three one thousand <laughs> <laughs> the old school the way old, the, the old, old school, school way counting the one leg counting the one leg <laughs> <laughs> i remember those all right so 10 minutes to 255 you want to give me an idea what this is going to help me out with so this 10 minutes this is this is simply a uh this is about conditioning. This is it's eighty percent of your threshold, so it's just a nice smooth effort. Sixty RPM. Remember to employ your glutes, your hamstrings. Nice smooth circle, and uh, yeah, it's just a nice easy strength effort to to open things up. Because gotcha. like we said, we start lower, 
we start with the lower power, longer efforts. We get higher power, higher, uh, sorry, higher power, shorter efforts, shorter recovery. So it's, uh, it's that pyramid. And then once you get to the top, you work your way back down. So you want to talk so a little about force maybe? And like, because I think some people think about their weaknesses and how to improve their weaknesses. And like, what is force? And how does building force in the pedal stroke important for what weaknesses and what that like gets at? So, so the most important thing was with strength training and they actually changed it to torque training because it's now okay. you'll note you'll notice when you do a really hard block of you know strength training your power is really really low because you're putting out so much torque if you had a torque gauge on your on your cranks you would see it would be through the roof so what they've done now they've, they've renamed it to torque training and it's all about engaging those muscle fibers at the correct time the correct circle so that you become an efficient peddler and the more efficient you are at peddling you know you're not wasting force production in an area where you don't need to be pushing the pedals down so it's all about all about pedal technique and again you know build that mitochondrial density but just make sure that you have a nice smooth pedal stroke that makes you a much much more efficient cyclist and i can feel that already like 151 255 not a huge big deal but in the legs with that lower rpm totally. definitely not necessarily feeling a burn but more of that weightlifting type force push the uh the torque exactly figuring out where the torque is it's it's actually right now i can tell because of the way we're doing this what areas in my pedal stroke are stronger and which ones are weaker because it exemplifies during the interval and that low cadence you can really identify where you're lacking you know, identify your weakness that's absolutely absolutely correct so one of my old coaches charlie walsh he used to make us do these efforts where we weren't actually allowed to hold on to the handlebars. We just had to rest them. So there's no gripping. And so the only thing you could use was your glutes and your hamstrings. And I tell you, you became so strong. You became, you could got such an efficient peddling stroke. And then when, you know, finally, after doing two weeks of that sort of stuff, you're allowed to hold the handlebars the power that you could produce was just incredible. It was just like, it sucks like anything for those two weeks. <laughs> but yeah, and it's, I've actually incorporated it in some of my programs on my website and I've nicknamed it hamstring from bone because it literally feels like you're ripping your hamstring off your bone. Oh so, my goodness. Yeah, it's horrendous. But but the strength you gain from it, the peddling technique you gain from it, it's uh, it's second to none. So, um, with the uh, those intervals that you were doing with no hands, that was all outside, not indoor. No, no, we were we were always on an ergo. Okay. We've been on. I've been on an ergo my whole life. Gotcha. So it's uh, freeze whiff. It's like a passion. Freeze Swift, <laughs> Ergo, no hands. Mate. <laughs> All I had was Charlie Walsh whispering in my ear. <laughs> he whispering in my ear going, is that all you've got, Hindi? I think you've got a bit harder. Mode. More power. More power. <laughs> <laughs> but he would I never get angry. He'd just, he'd just whisper in your ear. <laughs> so I have a... Uh, Question here coming from okay, Jory Barbier says, uh, This is more of a technical question. Oh, I'm getting that low cadence grind from erg mode. Here we go. All right, so I try and bring up this whole question. <clears throat> How do I do this in my pad? Uh, riding right now, but don't see a way to join. Yep, so 
Uh, this is coming up a lot, and that is the group workout mode that people are looking for. And without even maybe knowing that it exists or does not exist, people naturally, hey, how do I join others as an event in game? So that is coming. Right now, it's a download and then jump into the workout with us as you load that into it's your safe. documents with Zwift. It's a work in progress. So, soon it'll be up there, soon it'll be on the list on the side of your screen, group workout mode. But at the moment, you check Z Community Live, you check my Twitter, Nathan's Twitter, Zwift's Twitter, and you'll have a definition of the workout. You'll have a ZWO file that you can download, put it into your workouts, and then join us on the start line and do exactly what we're doing. There you go, Jory. And thanks for the example about how to interact with the broadcast. Really appreciate it. Um, is this a sort of Tron on two wheels? Philip Eddington is asking. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We're going to battle it out. Here we go. The set game is Power Pyramids, and it's go time. And we even got, well, I've got the Tron bike. Greg's got to get his That's climb true. on. I don't know I've what's been going doing on. It, <laughs> He's after it. Been, He's after it. I'm, you know, remember that ride I did last week? Seven yeah. hours with 6,000 meters of climbing. He's after it. He took out like 10% of the Tron bike in one ride. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. So just an interesting fact about this circuit here in the World Championships. This section here, it looks like it's the hardest section. It was honestly that bit we just went up before after that hairpin. I can't tell you how fast they were going up there. The Is world this or what? Getting ready for the cobbles then, hey? The bit before the cobbles was so fast at the worlds, I cannot, because it was all about positioning. So everyone who wanted to turn onto these cobbles first, mate, this was like once you got to the cobbles, it was like, ah, oh, it's a little bit easier, you know? Because everybody's but, positioned and you couldn't really move, I would think, unless there's a break. So it was all a battle to be well positioned. And then, of course, once you get to the top of this climb, it flattens off. So you think you've got 200 guys. By the time the first guy goes across the top, like we're about to now, the guy in 200th place, he's still three corners back. So he's still climbing. So the stretch now, all of a sudden around here, you're doing 50K an hour, and the guy going up the climb is doing 25. So. That's why position was so important. That's probably where the breaks were happening then, I would think. Uh, right through yeah. this section then. So, it was like a ramp test, you know. It was uh, four to go faster, three to go faster, two to go flat out, one to go sprint. Whew. It was incredible. <clears throat> Got another question coming in here. Coming from Carissa. Min, long time Zwifter and uh, Team TFC member in Zwift. What's a good target power range for low cadence efforts? Temple zone three, like in this workout, I hear a lot of warnings about knee damage. Good question. <clears throat> so that, that typically depends on the length of the effort. You know, if you want to build raw strength and power, we shorten those if it's right down to five to three minutes. But if you just want technique, pure strength, you can ride them at 75% of your functional threshold power, no problem. Won't do any harm. So it's just all about, it all depends on what you're actually trying to achieve in that effort. If you want a pure, raw grunt, raw power, the shorter the efforts, the better. But if you just want nice, steady, correct pedaling technique and overall strength conditioning, you know, we, you can do up to 15 minutes at low cadence. Doesn't have to be high watts. As long as you're doing a full pedal stroke, you'll still get massive gains. Yeah, I, uh, 
I think for, for as a mountain biker, force was, or torque, as uh, it's called now, I uh, had a huge focus on that, for sure. Being able to continually put out that force at a high power and not have that, have the muscle damage as quickly on my body uh, throughout the whole two hour race, right? Like having high torque without a huge impact on my ability to keep pedaling was a big deal, right? And so, Absolutely. yeah, I would, I would almost incorporate force workouts into a lot of different interval times. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Like, so I'd go over to a hill locally that's 30 seconds to a minute, and I would do my lactate talent reps, similar to what we were doing a few weeks ago. Full on half rest, full on half rest, but then it was so steep that it just forced me, no matter how many gears I had, to be just grinding yeah. it, right? Like, those were the hardest intervals ever, but I come into climbing and racing season, the climbs are nothing if I was doing that. And I do that with yeah. all time intervals. So force can be incorporated, I think, in anything, right, coach? Uh, absolutely, you can, uh, and this is a perfect example of, of, a, of an interval, uh, sorry, a session that will incorporate everything it's got. You know, we just did a 10 minute strength effort but we're also about to do a couple of one minute, you know, 120% of threshold. So this is a really good session to touch on every every aspect of your force production. So it's, um, and you know, again, this is an introduction. You know, if you get a bit crazy, you know, I've heard of guys doing three reps of this sort of stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's you just start where you, where you need to start. And again, it's about getting from point A to point B you gradually get faster, you gradually get stronger, and uh, you cope with the workload. It's just like, it's just adaption, you know, it's just muscle adaption. And it happens very fast. Your body's, believe it or not, your body's very clever. It, it doesn't like to suffer as much as we do, maybe. <laughs> if, that make, if I'm a third person to myself, but anyways, let's not get too philosophical. But um, the... Uh, I think the, the body definitely is like, okay, we did that to ourselves. It sounds like th this mind here has an idea of doing these more often. Let's definitely uh, respond quickly. So it's, uh, it's really great. And he, I have another question here, Greg, real quick uh, about the workouts. Where can I find all the downloads for the workouts? So, um, so all the, so I've created a, a web page called coachhendy.com and I've downloaded every single ZWO file on there along with about a 15 page FDP, uh, PDF file that will guide you through step by step every interval that, that you want to do. Whether it's a sprint one, whether it's a training one, a time trial, sorry, or a climbing effort. So you just pick what level you are, based basically on time and then if you don't have the time on to go out on the road you simply you just simply jump on the Zwift upload the file to um, file workouts and off you trot do it on the get on Zwift and you can punch it out in about an hour so it's um yeah it was a it was a long time and long progress but uh yeah I think it'll help guys realize that you know, you don't necessarily need to be doing five and six hour rides to be getting major benefits to make you a better bike rider. And then if you want to try out the workouts, you can join us on Workout Wednesday. We do these every week or two weeks or so. And uh, you can join us for these workouts to test out a handy workout. And you can download those at the links provided on ZCL, this Facebook, as well as at Twitter, there's a uh, little links to a Google download. You download the document for now and pump them into Zwift's documents. But when group workout mode comes, uh, they will be preloaded, I believe, for you. And you just join in the workout and we all start it together. And I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be good. Really looking forward to it. And the, uh, the good thing about the group workout is it's even if you you can't download the the voice or hear someone talking, there'll be a lot of uh, 
command prompts on the screen, you know, like, okay, now's the time, get ready, put it in the big gear, here we go, three, two, one. So there'll be a lot of uh, communication on screen even if you can't hear someone talking. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a great idea and it's, I think it's gonna work really well. Yeah, we'll probably load up a Discord channel too where people will be able to hear us at least. So, yeah. thanks, see you next Wednesday, Andrew Stallion says. All right, sounds good, Andrew. Thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks for your question. Appreciate it very much. Kev Steven, always good to see you in the broadcast. Says, so you have the force. Who's your dad? Okay, thanks a lot, Star Wars. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a... I love the, love the jokes. <clears throat> so being in the race and watching the race are two different things. You know, so often somebody will talk to me about their perspective of a race I participated in. I was like, that wasn't how it went at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, but what the camera catches and what their perspective can catch, catches and like how it ends up on the podium at the end doesn't always tell the story of the race, right? So oh, absolutely. So I, uh, I'm wondering, going down this finishing straight right now on the UCI World's course, what was your experience of how that played out in 2015? If you have anything on that. Well, it was like what we call a ramp test. So every single lap, we just went faster and faster and far. It was 270 kilometers. So from about four laps out, we were just going faster and faster and you could feel and then three to go they start attacking it gets brought back two to go they attack it gets brought back at this stage like you're hanging on for dear life you know you've got to be in good position for this last climb and uh yeah it's it, like i said the lead up to the positioning to that corner it was so hard so i uh i was in okay position but to be honest i was starting to run out of legs I was uh, hanging on for dear life, and I was like, right, it's only a minute to the top, come on. Full gas to the top, and then you can tuck the bottom, dive the corner, one more sprint up the short, steep one. And that's actually where Sagan went. And I mean, I don't think I could have gone that fast up there fresh, <laughs> let alone <laughs> after, 200, after 270 Ks. So I was actually in a group. We only lost 25 seconds or something to him. But uh, I was in one of those groups where it's like, I'm not sprinting for a medal, which I really wanted to. One of those situations where you sort of just roll across the line and, you know, I did good, I was happy, you know, I finished, whatever, but didn't have the legs on the day. I just wasn't in the same level as uh, as Peter Sagan, you know? Well, actually, in, in actual fact, nobody was. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> How important was the team? Like, I don't hear, how important were any team tactics? Or is that kind of out the window at that point because of the nature of the course, perhaps? Or, and then also it sounds like the other question that I think is really interesting is it sounds like you guys didn't chill, but the first up to four to go were not extremely hard. Are you talking about this world or? Uh, yeah, the 2015 Worlds. Yeah, 2015 Worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so like I said, it's, it's like a ramp test, you know, like in the lab where every lap just slowly gets faster and faster. And so, okay, the early break goes, everyone's happy, three or four guys, no major stress. We actually had one, rep New Zealand had one represented, so we're happy. Not that we were going to chase anyway, because we only had three guys. But, you know, it's, it's no major threat, you know, three guys over 270 kilometers, they're not gonna make it. So then what happens, it was like it's any typical world. It just gets faster and faster and faster until people start running out of legs because, you know, seven hour race, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. And so the team tactics then, uh, oh, we got 285 now. Here we go, five minutes. Yeah. Oh boy. Here we go. Ramp up, all right, just like the ramps. In the laps, we're ramping it up too. <laughs> oh boy. So 285, 60 RPM again. So all about the torque today. I think we're gonna see a little higher heart rate 
And Nathan, then last time. <clears throat> Looking through here, I'm going to check the uh, chat over at Twitch quick. <clears throat> Good to see you guys all tuning in over at Twitch as well. Appreciate you guys. No problems, there we go. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. The fan was too close. Started knocking it over. Because we want to be as cool as possible. There's much ventilation. They say uh, when you overheat here on, in one of your uh, training chambers, it's just as bad as being at altitude. The damage it can do makes it so much harder. Yeah, I have a gigantic industrial fan <laughs> right next to me. That'll help. So, try and get as much power as possible out of them legs. Reduce as much stress as possible. Same time, for heat training, I turn her off once in a while. Yeah, I've done that before as well. <clears throat> Especially if I'm going to a hot climate, you always try and, you know, Adapt as much as possible. Sit, sit in the sauna, whatever you can do. Because like we spoke about before, the old human body, it's not that dumb. It does adapt. Yeah, I saw some of my best training with that heat training, I think. Right. Not the best numbers. Best response. No, no. So you're coming into about halfway now. Let's see if it. Remember, <laughs> nice technique. That's Make the sure hard you part. Use those glutes. At 60 RPM. Not so much yeah. the power. It's the legs. <clears throat> Absolutely. Pulling through. Feeling like weight training on sections of the pedal choke. Just really, really focus on the hamstrings. The quads, the quads do their own job. They're so, you know, you don't even have to ask them to do a job. It's just all hamstrings, all glutes, really smooths out the pedal stroke. Just one for you to go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so as as the power goes up, the recovery comes down, but the length of the effort comes down also. So it's a nice little spike at the top, and then you ease your way back down to the final 10 minutes. Isn't it amazing how accurate these courses are? Like every time I ride Richmond, I'm like, I can almost remember exactly how I felt at this part of the race. It's That's crazy. amazing. Here it was always crashes here because of the feed zone. So it was always, always someone would crash on that lap. It's like, guys, come on. You know the feed zone's there. Relax. <laughs> nope. People attacking Still out of it. Crash. No, no Not holes barred. Not necessary. Long way to go. Still, you had countries like Germany controlling, you know, France controlling. So <clears throat> the big, the big nations with the big favourites, they weren't let, they weren't letting anything go anywhere. Yeah. So everybody was just waiting for the three climbs. It sounds like. Yeah. Absolutely, every time. And then when we get around to the circuit, the part on the circuit, I'll show you the other fight. A big fight into that hairpin. It's very difficult. Nice. How are you, how are you finding erg mode? It hurts. Erg mode hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, when you purposefully create that cadence that way with erg mode, it can punish you a little bit. 
you know? So, having it grind back at you. Those of you who might be unfamiliar with erg mode, um, if you lower your gear or you back off the power just enough to make it create, make it think you're not holding enough power, it starts pulling back on you and telling you, you need to hold this power. So then you can almost create your own force interval within the interval by doing that. There you guys. There you guys, Nath. I'll get on the wheel so it's a little easier. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, Steven's saying, don't think I can do 60 RPM at 285. That'll be the spiral of death, and that's actually exactly what I'm talking about is the spiral of death a lot of people talk about when it comes to uh, erg mode. <clears throat> it, uh, so intervals that are going to be failure, if you're ever failing an interval and have erg mode on, it will <clears throat> turn into a spiral of lower and lower cadence and eventually it's just like, I can't lift this anymore, just like weights, like I'm just failing. And uh, it'll just keep pulling back and then eventually you either stop pedaling or end the interval or <laughs> if, if you can't complete. But that's the awesome thing about erg mode too though, is that it forces whether or not you can actually do it. But don't forget you've got that, if you think your threshold set a little too high, you can always adjust it on the left hand side there. Good call. Really, man. really handy. Let's do that. You can that. always put that down. 135, there we go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sometimes you have a good day, sometimes you have a bad day, and sometimes it's very difficult at, when you're not used to low cadence work, just drop that FCP a little bit, you'll still get a workout, you're still getting the benefits, it's just, the one thing I learned about training over the years, it's, it's not an ego session, it's an ergo session, you know, so there's a big difference. Yeah, so if I were feeling real good today and was like, oh, 305, man, not exactly what I was looking for. Need a little more. I can up it up the uh, one, two, three to all the way to 10% or bring it back down all the way to 90% if needed. So good fluctuation. And that actually matches up right along with what knowing your FTP is for, right? I mean, it's a guesstimation to your best performance for one hour. So, correct. So what we do is we do a, effectively we do a 20 minute time trial. We take your average power on that 20 minute time trial. And then what we do is we take 95% of that average power. And it's a pretty good accurate um, summary of the power that you could fully fresh, fully tapered, fully ready to go. It's about the power you could hold for one hour. So it's, um, it's a lot nicer than having to do an hour full gas, you know, <laughs> to, get, to get you 100% threshold power. So it's, um, yeah, it's 20 minutes, it's super hard, but you know, once you do some threshold training, once you do some proper structured time trial or climbing or any type of structured training, you test within three weeks and you'll have a 30 or 40 watt increase and you'd be just like, hang on, what happened here, you know? Just because the way you structured your training and you slowly increased your body's ability to clear lactic acid. Also super difficult probably to have the motivation to do a one hour all out. I mean, and even to know whether or not it was accurate because a lot of times the motivation you need, I would think a lot of FTPs could be set records for your one hour to be set off the front in a break, doing a bunch of work, you know what I mean? Like, or some long, because yeah. the motivation of being chased is so much different than, oh, um, sure. than just sitting there on your lonesome. All right, three minutes to 300, let's go. We got perfect stars, erg mode for the win. We're winning erg this game. Erg mode for the win, <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Maybe you've set your threshold just a little bit too low, huh? Oh, come on. 
<laughs> I see how you play. <laughs> we haven't changed it since we started Workout Wednesday, so maybe we'll see. <laughs> Definitely getting fitter. We climbed the Watopia Mountain the other day. We're about a minute and a half off, maybe two. A good effort, but I hadn't really eaten or drinking that day. So <laughs> I think that impacted it. I reckon might have had something to do with it. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> so we just got home from uh, Norway, the Worlds, Worlds in Bergen. What a beautiful country Norway is. And uh, you know how we were speaking about the Worlds here in Richmond, where four to go, three to go, two to go. One to go, it's just this ramp test. Exact same thing played out, you know? There was always gonna be a gamble. Are we, got, are we gonna have rain? Or is it gonna be a dry day? Because it'll be a totally different course in the wet compared to the dry. And, you know, for the, for the senior women and the senior men, both beautiful dry days. So what happens, it comes down to a bunch kick. And uh, I think if you'd had seen some rain, it would have been ones and twos. If it had been, you know, 50 degrees and, and rain, it should have been a small field coming to the line. But it was just, I was thinking, I was wondering how I would feel being in the car, watching my riders suffering along in the rain, and I'm in the car. <laughs> With the heater on, because so many, so many years in my career, I've been the one outside <laughs> suffering like a dog in the rain. You go and see the director; they hardly want to open the window because it's so cold. <laughs> and you're like, "Can I please have some gloves?" <laughs> <laughs> they go, "Why? Right, what's the problem? It's 25 degrees in here." So uh, I was happy. It was. I was happy. It was warm. I was happy it was dry. I was happy we got a nice, a nice bunch sprint with the strongest riders. Ten We're seconds, buddy. A this time, this one's Good man. That's what it's all about. I'm feeling that force work. That's for sure. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. So the the part of the circuit we're coming up to now, this hairpin, as you can imagine, through this through this sort of building here that's like a tunnel. I mean, there was riders going either side like crazy because they knew if you turn in the top 10 for this corner, the acceleration out of the corner was never as heavy. So you turn out of this corner, I mean, if you turn 100, you literally had to sprint for 100 meters before it would bunch up again. And then you turn right and hit the cobbles. So, so you said you get a, a lot free of... ride, not free ride, but if you're in the top 10, the efforts completely different, completely different. 100% different, 100%. So even when you're a small nation like New Zealand, you actually have to adapt your training to it. You have to know, okay, I'm not going to be allowed to sit up the front. You know, there is some kind of hierarchy, you know, our team's not contributing to the chase. So you move down the back, you know, you don't get in the way of the big teams. So you tr you adapt your training to it. So I knew, okay, how many out spots of the big here, teams get? How many spots comparison? They get, they get nine and we get three. Whew. <laughs> yeah, big big difference. So how would you adapt your training to it then? So I would do a lot of that stuff. You know, remember the Sue Wiggos we were doing? Yeah, yeah. A lot over, of that under, stuff. Over, under, over, under kind of stuff. Yeah. So I knew I'd be sprinting. Not not 100% sprint, but I knew I'd be spending quite a bit of time over threshold. Probably probably to right about the spot where we are now. And it would slow down a little bit. And then you could get some recovery before you hit the climb. But if you'd not done that work, you know, you're going to sprint out of that corner, be loaded with lactate, and then try and climb. It's not, uh, 
It's not a party in your pants, that's for sure. It's like three more sprints extra than needed, essentially, like full on loading. Oh. And after, after 270 kilometers, you can imagine how much that loads up. So I have a question actually here, a little bit of interesting questions coming through. But before I start, I got 25 seconds, so we'll see if we can handle, but do you know what happened in the last five kilometers in Bergen? Laugh out loud from Carissa and quite a few others jumping in on that too. So, because the technical difficulties on the screen, I guess, in the last five. Yeah, so the, the camera switched to, uh, <laughs> I think just a, what, a long shot, 1K to go. So there was actually a lot of attacks and uh, it, was a, it was a really dangerous move. It was hard to see from the over, over screen. But it looked like there was a Frenchman gone. I think it might have been Galapan went again with a couple of others. And in actual fact, the guy that saved the day for Christoph was Edvald Bosenhagen. You saw him get on the front and he just chased and chased and chased and closed that gap and then set up the chance of a sprint. If Bosenhagen hadn't got on the front, you might have seen a different winner. 15 seconds, mate. Try and catch you. There it goes. Wow. Good job. But don't relax too much, mate. And I We're into it again. When I go super hard lately, it drops for a second. I don't know why. I figured that one out. So here we go. In the uh, interview with Sagan, he actually said he thought that was gone. He thought it wasn't coming back. Yeah, 100%. So did I. When I saw the overview, I was like, wow, great move. But, uh, Bosnagan well, just yeah. buried himself. So that was it. I bet you, Chris, I bet you Christoph owes <laughs> Bosnagan a beer or two. But, um, I'm actually speaking with, uh, I've got this podcast called Out of the Saddle. So I've got uh, Christoph on the, on the podcast in a couple of weeks. So he wrote to me and just goes, please be gentle on me about the world championships. <laughs> well, that's humble. That's humble. I like that. That's a uh, super nice guy. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, here we go. 50 seconds go. This is where Sargon attacked. Last lap. I'm doing it too. Jones is killing me though. Going over the effort. <laughs> Come on, Jones. What are you doing to me? <laughs> PTZ. Whooping on vision. Is eight, five, four, three, <clears throat> and donkey tuck. I think these next ones are gonna hurt. Wow. That's what happened. So now you get Up three minutes. Me. Starts off okay. Even the last 10 minute one where we were talking, you'll be struggling to talk. But we're supposed to be going you can obviously downhill on the pyramid, oh, aren't we? This is supposed to be easy. So, now to, <laughs> so the next water just less, just a little bit longer. 300 watts for three minutes. What is that? That's right on FTP. Right around. Right on FTP, correct. And then we got a five at 280. And that looks like, what, 95? Nine, nah. 90-ish percent, and then 85. So it's exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same on the way down as the way up. The percentages though, so we're at 100%, we're at, what was that, 95% and then 85%? 95, correct. Okay.
And uh, let's see here. Good guy, Eddie, from Carissa. Talking about Bosenhagen. Uh, Edwald's right. home nation, Ken Steven is staying. So, had to work. <clears throat> so, he had a... Um... They had a two-pronged attack. Eddie had a chance to follow Alaphilippe on the final climb. And if that stuck, then they ride 100% for Eddie for the win. But as you saw, nobody could ride with Alaphilippe up that last climb. He was so strong. So then it was like, righto, everything for Christoph for the sprint. Ah, uh, so they just let him go and dangle. Go ahead, go, that's fine, you're super strong. But, <laughs> but you're just going to dangle out there because together we're stronger than you, so. <laughs> it wasn't dangle. He, he was so strong. Wow. It was, really, it was really a dangerous move because there was a lot of downhill, a lot of technical left, right, left. So to actually organize a chase, really difficult, you know, like to get a team rotating. And then as you saw, well, you didn't see so many attacks going from the French and from the different nations, there was just no control. It was, there was just not one team that could fully control it until Eddie the Boss got on the front and just said, right, oh, calm down, boys. We're having a bunch sprint. We're having a bunchy, boys. Just settle down, follow me. This is how it's done. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. 300 watts at three minutes. Yep. It's a lot easier than those last ones, that's for sure. Oh. Ooh. Nice. An extra 65 watts. Ooh. That was... Put, put some damage in the legs. That was some work. For sure. Six percent gradient up here. I remember going up here in the beginning of the race thinking, Oh, this climb's nothing. Oh, no worries. <laughs> you get about 200 kilometers in. When did they put Alpe d'Huez in? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Like the, the things that go through your brain, you know, when you're when you're out on the bike for so long. Just and then when fatigue sets in, and I mean, there's only so much you can take on board. I've trained my stomach to try and take. 280 to 300 calories an hour but the math still doesn't work out you know after seven hours it's impossible to to actually be fueled enough to so take um, all that i mean it takes time yeah, it's hard huh jeez you have to train your <laughs> that's all about that use of other energy systems what those long rides are for Whew. yeah well that's that's the trick is, uh, in a lot of my training programs, I use a lot of fasted riding, which basically forces you to use fat. And the higher wattage or the higher percentage of heart rate that you can use fat at, theoretically, the longer you can go. So a lot of training is done in that state, in that fasted state. So your only option is to burn the excess fat. And if you can do that, you know, you can last forever. But uh, it's hard training. It takes a good four or five rides to get used to it without going hunger flat. So it's, um, yeah, it's really, really hard training. Even though, the, even though the power's not high, it's really hard. Yeah, I've been there. Fasted yeah. workouts are difficult. That's for sure. But it's amazing how the body will adapt to it. Three to five hours, no food, a little bit of fat. Wah! You're done. Don't start there. Don't start at three to five hours. No, One no. hour. One hour fast. One hour. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we do too. One hour. <laughs> black coffee, out you go, black coffee, one hour, and then just start eating normally after, after the hour. And then you slowly build that up, hour and a half, maybe two, but yeah, it's a, um, it's a totally different feeling. 
And you must make sure that you stay, you know, zone one, no more than zone two. Otherwise, you know, your body's gonna want to burn carbohydrates that you effectively don't want to use. Because your body stores naturally about 90 minutes of muscle glycogen. But once that's gone, you either have to rely on the fats that you've learned how to, to burn or the food that you're eating. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult uh, combination to get correct. But, uh, you know, over the years, over time, once you get it right, you get huge gains. Kev Steven, uh, asking for links to the workout. So yeah, they're over at coachendy.com. You can find them there. Or today's workout, you can find on the Zwift Facebook, uh, on this live stream, in the description. There's a link to it right in the description uh, so that you could join in. Always be watching for the announcement of the live stream so you can download the workout. But that will no longer be necessary soon enough with group workout mode on the way. For those of you just tuning in, which I think we do have a few just getting here. Um, Kevin Dobbs, where do I get on one of these? David Horton. So you can check out all the workouts that we do with Coach Hendy right on over at coachhendy.com. Uh, he's got uh, full training programs for sprint training, teacher training, climb training, etc. Um, all different levels depending on how much time essentially sounds like is that right if, coach andy if you got if you go and check out the news there you see i've given a, an explanation as to how these workouts work it's uh hindi, coach hindi program so that there just explains to everyone look even though it's 28 days it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done in 28 days you've got if you want to go and do a bunch ride on a Sunday, sure, go and do the bunch ride on Sunday, no problem. But just pick up, pick up where you left off, you know? So it's just, uh, yeah, it's basically right there explains. Some, even if the program takes you 40 days to complete, it's all about the structure. It's all about the, it's all about the progression. And, uh, and uh, yeah, still enjoy your cycling. Still get out there with your mates. Still get out in the early morning bunch ride, no problem. But if you've got time to do intervals, pick up where you left off. Well, I think I called it the clinic to success, mate. The cl clinic to success. All right, so we have a minute 27. Go on the recovery. Then we'll get a five minute at 285, a five minute 150, and then a 10 minute 255 with a 750 cool down. A half hour to go. About half out to go, mate. <clears throat> so again, uh, remember, perfect, perfect technique, good form, nice 60 RPM. Engage those glutes, engage those hamstrings. Just, just all about perfect pedaling technique. Yeah. So the uh, these. Uh, Starting to feel a lot better, actually. Those, those ones in the middle, put me in a spot of bother a little bit. Like, especially with the shorter recovery, it was like coming to this yep. peak, and it got more intense and more intense, and you could feel the no reprieve. But now with the longer reprieve in between each one, I'm starting to go okay. So I'm starting to think, okay, wait a second. With how I'm feeling right now, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a five minute 285, <laughs> then a two minute 255. How am I, am I going to fail? You know what I mean? But then the longer recovery, the clearer out starts kicking in and I'm like, okay, Absolutely. this is manageable. Now it's doable. Yeah. So it's exactly, it's a, you basically got exactly what the, the uh, workout's designed for. Okay. So sorry, I was on a wrong page here. There we go. So if you'd like to join the broadcast, have you seen a few people coming in with their comments and questions, you can do so. Just Facebook or tweet at us. 
It's easier for you. At Z Community Live. I'm also watching the Mixer channel. Ah, what's going on there, Flip Sharky? How you doing? And the Twitch channel. Okay, this one is killing me for some reason. Holy cow. You'll have some muscle fatigue after this effort. Whew. It's that force. I feel it. Yeah. If you we haven't tried much of it weeks. before. We just haven't been lifting for weeks or riding much. Oh. So. I see we've got a few guys following us. That's nice. Yeah, we got Martin Bowes. Recognize him for sure. I think he's doing the workout. Hope he's suffering as much as you. <laughs> We're coming into three minutes to go now. Good job. And again, it's another one of those, another one of those workouts where, in all honesty, if you went and did it again in four days' time after some recovery, you'd be like, "Is this the same power?" You know, it's, your body adapts to it so quickly. But as long as, you, if you don't touch this sort of exercise, if you don't do it, it's so foreign to the body. It really, really hurts. Because, like I said. It's not like we do massive, massive power. It's just the torque. It's just the strain on the cranks, the force on the muscles. That's what makes it so difficult. Nice. Righto. Two to go. Two to go, mate. <clears throat> right in that 170. Definitely feeling it. Good effort. <clears throat> A lot of strength training done, like I said. Just improves that pedaling technique, improves your force production. The more efficient your pedaling technique is, the more endurance you have. You're not, you're not using muscles when they don't need to be used. You're using the correct muscles to make that crank and that pedal go around in the right direction. So it's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a learned exercise. One that, again, I always talk about this neuromuscular adaption, but with cycling, so much of it happens. Your brain learns and your body adapts and all of a sudden, the increase is, the increase is huge. Of course, it's to a certain plateau. You know, you'll, three or four sessions of this and you will, you'll plateau and it'll take a lot of hard extra work just to get the minute gains. But at the moment, when it's some of the first times you've done it, you'll feel the, feel the pain, but you'll get the big gains. I think that rhymed, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. I know you're suffering. A little bit. I'm okay. I'm okay. But the talking yeah, is not happening. Seconds. Oh, boy. Processing Coach Hendy is only giver. Deal with Larry. <laughs> Deal with Larry. Good job. There goes the banner. Don't we love, we love to see that banner. There's a question coming through from Kev Steven. Has Coach Andy been up Mount Ventu? Ventu, how did he find it? Is this a uh, I have been up, <laughs> I have been up, 
<laughs> I have been at Mont Ventoux and I found it by following the Peloton on the Tour de France. <laughs> That's how I found it. No, but it's actually not too bad because the first nine or ten kilometres were really quite steep up through the up through the forest. Um, yeah, the, the first ten k's is the hardest, and then it flattens off. Nice switchbacks, nice views if you if you've got the time to take in the view. And uh, uh, I've done it two or three times. Both times beautiful weather. You know, I've seen times where massive crosswinds or or whatever so it's um it's definitely a a climb of two parts you know if you can survive that first part then you'll survive the last part of that climb no problem sounds like there's actually a pretty good amount of drafting on that second half then it flattens out and it gets really exposed i would think there's a sure. lot of grouping up going on for sure for sure but what you have to also take into account is to the end of 200k or something like that. So it's not like you just start at the bottom and go up. So there's already residual fatigue in the in the legs. So any attacks really do damage, I would think. Well, I'll be on. I'll be honest with you, Nath. I'm not usually there when the attacks are going down uphill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's just a matter of survival for me. But I've seen uh, I've seen some video video footage of <clears throat> Chris Froome having to use his brakes on the way uphill. And I'm like, I remember scratching my head, just going, "What? <laughs> Break braking going uphill? Are you serious?" <laughs> but uh, yeah, different at a different level to me uphill. That's for sure. So what do we got? Two and a half so, minutes? Yeah, we have about two and a half minutes of pretty chill. I'm loving these breaks. Oh man. They are a godsend right now. Um, I didn't take, take it too easy on you, did I? <laughs> Kev Steven says that he's doing Mount Ventoux next year, actually. So that's awesome, Kev. Not sure about views. <laughs> I'm thinking about breathing only. <laughs> So, good luck on that, Kev. Absolutely awesome. Just prepare for the first, the first nine or ten k's. Just prepare for that. This next one at two fifty-five shouldn't be too bad. So this is your wow. last. This is your last strength effort. <clears throat> yeah, this for is the your last strength. Effort. You, uh, info. Kev is staying. No problem, Kev. No problem at all. Looking through here at some of the comments. Chris uh, Amin is super active over at the Twitch. Did you see Richmond is only up for one day next month? Save Richmond. Hashtag save Richmond. What's your favorite course, Greg? On Zwift. Favorite course. And it could be just the whole world. Or is there a specific course you might select that's your favorite? I enjoy the hilly Whiteopia. I enjoy that for sure. You can get such specific workouts done on those long climbs. Um, like an inch closer to my Tron bike. Um, so you like the mountain route? Cool. Or do you like hilly Whiteopia? Yeah. Mountain route, mountain route, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh. That was my go-to for a while. For a while, yeah. the mountain, especially when I was in like intense training, for some reason that right. mountain was really motivating. Super motivating. Oh yeah. So easy to do. Uh... This is interesting. Oop. A little power drop out. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to chase you. Uh, that's okay. I'm not going too fast. <laughs> so, um, let's hear what your favorite course is if you're out there watching. Racy Mike says, I like Hilly Watopia. So he likes the forward or reverse Racy Mike or both. 
and then uh, see if anybody else is coming through. What's your favorite course on Zwift? <clears throat> <laughs> Martin was there for a lot of those intervals on my channel. <laughs> we did them all live and they would be screaming at me if I wasn't going to get the KOM or whatever. It was like super motivation. That's a little plug to live streaming. The reality of having the witness of your interval whew, and being cheered on while doing it makes things really real. I really hope this is you here. All right, next group. Yeah, we're on full on chase now. Coach Andy's got a chase. Oh, no problem. 7-7. Seven, seven. Look at this guy. Made it. There's the I'm preload. Back. Just like yeah, the world. The preload. <laughs> Was that familiar? Chasing on, that's just familiar. like you were saying, to the bottom of the hill. Wow. It was exactly the same. <laughs> I see there's a G Miller from New Zealand at the bottom of the screen. I wonder if that's the famous Graham Miller. Oh, that'd be interesting. Somebody should tweet at him and figure it out. He's following you. He's right on your uh, wheel. That looks like a female, doesn't it? Oh, does it? Let me see. I can't check. Yeah, you're right. It's not Graham. It's not Graham. She's got all the jerseys though. He's killing it. <laughs> so Graham was one of the top cyclists when I was a kid growing up in New Zealand. But I think G Miller might be riding with you for this workout. Hey, G Miller. What's up, G Miller? <laughs> She's on the uh, she's on the halfway point. She's doing the 120% part, killing it. We're dying at 85%. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, it's good. Here we go. <laughs> Looking through here. So this this part here was. One of the real stretches in the race. It was, like I said, guys are still coming up over the KOM. And where you are now, we're doing 55, 60K an hour. So you think to try and catch that, what power you have to do. So it's just about so many micro surges in this race. I think you're putting 800 watts out just to get back on. Oh, for sure, yeah. <clears throat> All right, it's not as high, but the uh, strain in the legs and that low cadence yeah. is definitely there. It's heat resistance. So at the end of a bike race, you know, when everyone else has got tired legs, you're quite familiar with the feeling and off you trot solo. Beautiful. Put the hands in the air and give it the big yippee smile. Yippee. Off you trot. I like that. I'll be trying. <laughs> Go on, Nathan. Eat Libby for breakfast. Working on it, Lee. Appreciate it. We're going to end up with. Two full laps. 
Good job. Three. Three full laps. Two full laps. I can't even count. I can't, I've lost count. Going so hard. Nearly 50k anyway. I still That's talking kilometers. <clears throat> Beautiful. Here he goes. Straight on the wheel. Good job. Righto.